Uh, hi there, uh, my name is Franklin MacArthur. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to do a, a video tutorial on how to write a lens flare particle system uh, using just OpenGL and C++. Uh, this here is a video game engine I wrote completely from scratch. It uses nothing but C++, OpenGL, and then there's an input system and a sound system and so forth. Uh, but anyway, a lens flare particle system is somewhat easy to talk about because it's a relatively contained special effect. Um, anyway, it's about a two or a three part special effect depending on how you do it. Um, the first part is how to procedurally generate a, a, a polygon lens flare image using just an incoming fragment coordinate. The next part is how to animate it. And then the third part is how to do this little trick right here. You see the light source over here, and then to discard it. Now there is also bloom, which uh, is a part of this, but it's not a part of the lens flare effect. It's uh, another effect. Okay, and uh, and I'm focusing on these little on these round discs that are going from the center of the image here. Okay, and that way. Okay. All right, so anyway, I'm going to try to keep it as focused on lens flares as possible and not other things. Okay, so these uh, round circles here, um, and again, uh, it may not be physically correct exactly, but this is just how I'm implementing it. This is this is my impression as to how it should look. Um, okay, so how you how you do this is I'm using a, you know, a vertex buffer, and it's actually a vertex buffer times several. Uh, several uh, data chunks and um, each within each chunk I'm updating the vertex buffer uh, but anyway each vertex uh, position contains several attributes it contains the position of the light source and a scalar that is a scalar uh, as to how to project the lens flare away from the projected light source and screen space through the center of the image Okay, and that projected value uh, is always constant uh, from one frame to the next. I know that's a little bit hard to understand the way I just described it, but uh, that is actually uh, perfectly accurate. Okay, so so anyway, I'll take it slow. I'm going to talk about how to generate the lens flare image on a point sprite basis by point sprite basis. Okay. The, uh, how to generate the lens flare image itself is uh, completely self-contained. Okay, so I'll get through that really quick. You can apply this to Direct3D or Vulkan or any other kind of low-level API that can do this. Okay, so you take the incoming fragment coordinate, okay, and uh, that's going to range from 0 to 1, 0 to 1, multiply by 2, subtract 1. Now you have uh, negative 1 to 1, negative 1 to 1 standard Cartesian coordinates. Now take the arc tangent of that, uh, either y comma x or x comma y. Just be consistent for which one it is you're going to use. Now you have the angle uh, that that fragment is around the center of the image relative to the top axis or the side uh, x-axis. Okay. From there, you divide that angle of the incoming fragment uh, by uh, radians per edge. Okay, so in this case, you divide it by 2 pi divided by the number of edges you want. You're going to get a quotient uh, and a remainder. Okay, so you take the floor of that uh, result, and you're going to get the angle of the lower end vertex or the edge you're working with. Now take the ceiling of that, of that uh, quotient and remainder, and you're going to get the, the high end uh, um, uh, angle of vertex value. Now take the cosine and sine of the high end vertex angle minus the cosine and sine of the lower end vertex angle, cross product unit Z. Now you're going to have a vector sticking out the side of the polygon edge. Okay, and since we're only concerned with relative distance and not actual distance, um, well, since you're only concerned with uh, relative distance, uh, we don't need to normalize. So normalization in general is a waste of time. If you can avoid it, avoid it. You can do it or not. There's no bad effect here. But anyway, you take that cross product of the of the top edge vertex minus the lower end edge vertex, 
two unit Z. Now you get that vector sticking out the side of the edge at 90 degrees. Now take the dot product of that cross product to either B0 or B1. And, uh, and now you have the D component for how far uh, the edge extends from the center of the image. Okay. Now take the dot product of the incoming uh, fragment coordinate converted into Cartesian coordinates, okay, so that was, if you remember, uh, 0 to 1, 0 to 1, times 2, minus 1, okay, now you take the dot product of that to that cross product. Now, if that value is greater than your D component, discard the fragment. Now you have a polygon image based only on the incoming fragment. Okay, so you can make as many sides as you want uh, for a particular lens, for any particular lens flare. Uh, okay, so what's nice about this effect in general is it's it doesn't play a real role in the game. It's just a, a nice neato effect to complement other neato effects that you have in the game. Now the other thing to pay attention to here is the uh, how to scale the radius. You notice that the radius remains consistently the same as the light source. So what I'm what I'm doing here, and it gets me a good result, is to take the uh, is to take the uh, the viewport height, multiply that by the model view radius. Take that in parentheses, divide that uh, by the projected screen space coordinate of the light W component. Okay, so now that uh, that radius will be adjusted correctly uh, for distance uh, according to a perspective uh, perspective uh, matrix. Okay, so that's consistent like that. Okay, and um, now from there, that's the first part of it. Okay, generating the image. Okay, now the next part of it is to do this little uh, nice trick here. Hopefully, it's, this is obvious right here. Now you see it cut off other things cut off too so it's not the light rays that I'm focusing on it's really the uh, these ghost uh, images right here which are the lens flares so you know, I turn it sideways here ah, okay they came back okay but anyway they're hidden okay and, and the idea here is that the second part of the effect is that uh, when the light source is occluded, you don't want the uh, lens flares to render. And then uh, when the light is not occluded, they render. Okay, so so how uh, how you do that is to uh, project the incoming um, uh, light source, okay, um, which is encoded into every attribute of every lens flare point sprite vertex. Um, into screen space, okay? So so each lens flare within this vertex buffer, okay, uh, you multiply that by the per, uh, perspective times model view times uh, the light position. Now, um, I divide that by uh, W coordinate, okay? And that's perspective division there. Now the light source should be between negative one and one, negative one and one. Okay, now, uh, from there. Now remember, that is just the light source. That is actually not the position of the lens flare. So, so uh, to picture this correctly, it's actually uh, each uh, vertex representing a single lens flare does not have its position. It has the position of the light source. Okay, so to be able to do this little trick where, you, where this happens, um, you, you take the projected uh, light coordinate in screen space. Now you take the x, y of that value divided by w, add 1 divided by 2, now use that as a fragment coordinate uh, lookup into the depth buffer of the opaque target. Okay, so you look up that value in the opaque target. It's not where the lens flare is. Uh, just as a reminder, it's where the actual light source is. So if you can picture this, the center of each lens flare uh, has the uh, the light value, uh, the light position value encoded into each one. Okay, so to do this, again, I, I don't mean to confuse anyone here, because I'm not very good at public speaking, but, uh, but anyway, after you project the light source and then add and then divide the projected uh, screen space coordinate by, by W, that's the perspective division, add one divided by two, now use the XY 
as a lookup into the depth buffer uh, of the, the opaque object, which is the spaceship there. Okay, now to compare the z divided by w value of the light to the value read back from the depth buffer. Okay, so you have to convert the z divided by w into the same terms um, as the value in the depth buffer. You you could do the conversion either way. You could convert the depth into the space of the light, or light into the space of the depth. It doesn't matter. Okay, so how I do that is I um, I take that, add one, divide by two. Depending if it's dark 3D or versus OpenGL, you may have to flip that. Okay, so the z divided by w of the of the screen space light position will range from negative one to one. Add one, divide by two, and if I remember correctly, you have to take one minus that value and then compare that to the value in the depth buffer. Now, if the light uh, coordinate value has a greater uh, depth value and the value read back from the depth buffer, then the light source is occluded by opaque geometry. And you can test that inside the vertex shader. You can determine that. And then you can just uh, set an output uh, variable of discard all. And then when the pixel shader gets it, you just dis uh, discard every fragment. Okay, now uh, yeah, I am tackling this a little bit out of order. Now the animation part, this this little thing right here, and the reason why they disappear is that I want it to disappear as it goes off to the side and come back at maximum value at about 45 degrees and go back to nearly zero just before it cuts off. Okay, and um, how I'm doing this here uh, is okay so for the animation part um, each lens flare has the position of the light source okay so to animate this uh, you project it into screen space so I take the perspective matrix times model view times the light source that gives me a screen space coordinate divide each uh, value by W now X and Y will vary from negative 1 to 1 negative 1 to 1 also as an incoming attribute I have a uh, randomized but consistent value for the lens flare index. Uh, that's, that's a scalar value that goes from negative 1 to 1. So I take that negative 1 to 1 scalar value and I multiply it by the projected light's screen space position xy. That will project the flare away from the light through the center of the image out the other side. And uh, and yeah, and that's how you do it. I'm also varying transparency in such a way uh, I get a little bit creative with this. This might not be physically correct, uh, but it is It is my proof. Uh, well, it's my impression as to how it should behave as you go away you know, towards 90 degrees, the, the lights get to, I mean, the flares get spread apart and they go away, and as you go this way, they get spread apart. Okay, um, that is my lens flare tutorial, and and uh, and that's it. Thank you very much.